OK, so hello again, everyone. Um, I'm going to be demonstrating for you today how to set up and use the um, the new Kodak uh, new scan Q800 document camera that we've purchased at the institution to uh, allow you to use as a um, an instructional aid during your classes. So to do this, I'm going to switch my camera here. All right, one second, it's not swapping. There we go. OK, so everybody now sees my hand. All right, so what you're seeing right now, so if you have picked up the camera already from the library or if uh, you haven't yet, this is the box that the camera comes in. And basically, there's not much inside that box. Um, so I've already taken the liberty of taking everything out. Um, one second to move this out of the way. So what you're going to find in the box is a CD for the Kodak software, um, a USB cable like this, the camera, which is going to be basically set up like this, and it's, be, it's very heavy on one end and light on the other end. So just be careful with that as you pick it up. And then it's going to be rolled up, but you're going to see this black mat inside there as well. Now, the mat is not technically required. However, the mat does have some advantages. So one, if you follow the descriptions on the mat, so you notice there's a spot that indicates where to put the camera. If you position the camera in that box, you'll notice it, it might be hard to see here, but there's little in uh uh in like kind of boxed shape areas um all along the mat so what this means is right here and i'll try to get close if you see there's a little plus symbol uh right here that's the very center so if you position your camera there this will be the very center of whatever image you use and then when you'll see those box shapes going around the perimeter here those boxes correspond to the size of the paper that you're using. So it's actually marked A5, letter A3. So this helps you to position your paper. None of this is officially required, but it can come in handy. OK, so I mentioned the Kodak software. If you need to install the Kodak software, which I recommend, you need to get in touch, presumably, with IT. So if this goes on your personal computer, you can install it however you want. But like me here, if you've got an RCC laptop, you're going to have to go through the IT department to get it installed. And they were able to do that for me remotely. So all I had to do was call up the IT staff. They were able to log into the computer, and then they were able to remotely install the software for me. OK? So. That's software, that's positioning camera. Once you have everything installed, I'm going to turn it around here so you can see. In the back of the camera, there's two USB connections here. The one that you want to use is the one here in white. So basically, you're going to plug the USB cable in. Okay. Then the other end of the USB cable is going to get plugged into your computer. And again, I apologize if for some of you this is, you know, very straightforward. I like to make sure that I do this as um, detailed as possible for those who might not be computer savvy. So next thing is this camera right now is folded it protects the lens of the camera so you would actually fold it up like this it's fairly straightforward here's the the camera lens itself right here is um an led light so that you can light up your image uh, when you're trying to project it and then on the front here is a little switch well it's a kind of a tapping button that would turn the led light on 
Okay, so when I tap this, the LED comes on, it actually has a few different brightness intensities and then the off setting. That is basically it. There are no other features built into the camera itself. Okay, so if everything has been done correctly, uh, let me switch back now. Okay, so if everything has been done correctly now, you should be able to use the camera. So you have the software installed, you have the camera set up like I showed you on the black mat, and you have the USB cable plugged into the back of the camera as well as into the computer. Okay, so this is basically your setup at this point. Um, the one thing to be careful of is make sure that you are setting up the camera on a nice smooth flat surface. So I have mine set up here on my desk. If you have things underneath it, it will jiggle the camera because you know it needs to be nice and level. And so the camera might fall over or it might not focus properly. So you want to make sure that it's set up nice and flat on like a desk or on a, I don't know if it's a floor or something along those lines. Okay, just to make sure that it's, um, it's not going to fall over and you get nice clean images. All right, so at this point, I'm going to be switching to, um, to the other version of Teams. Well, my, my other login, so bear with me for one moment while I log in there. All right, so I'm going to walk you through a few different things here right now. One, when now that I have the camera installed, I actually have two cameras installed on this computer. But what you're seeing me through is the integrated web camera right now. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Ah, OK. Nice. okay. So everybody right now presumably sees Bill's image on the screen. Yes. yes. <laughs> I see him. <laughs> All right. So if you notice, I'm going over here to where the three little dots are. I click on that and I see device settings. When I click on device settings, this is where my speaker, my microphone is, and at the very bottom, camera. And when I click on the little V-shaped symbol at, when it, and next to where it says integrated webcam, you'll see I have two options. I have a Kodak camera and an integrated web camera now. So here is where things get fun. <laughs> I have in the background a virtual background. If, if some people like to just switch cameras, in which case they want to just switch between the integrated camera and the document camera. If you do that and you have a virtual background, you're going to mess things up. Let me demonstrate. I will switch to my Kodak camera. You guys probably hear me, but you're probably just seeing my virtual background now. That's because what you're actually seeing is the document camera. My hand is actually here, but if you notice, it's getting messed up by the fact that the virtual background is there. So I could turn the virtual background off, but then again, if I want to switch back to my integrated web camera, I got to put my virtual background maybe on or something like that. Maybe people have it for a reason, you know, you guys don't want to see my bedroom, for instance. So just be aware of this option that yes you can switch between the virtual the document camera and the integrated web camera but you know you're going to have that virtual background issue and then you're going to be bouncing back and forth okay my suggestion to you is to use the kodak software so you should all still be seeing my desktop i'm going to turn on the kodak software the Kodak software automatically detects the Kodak camera. So this is the integrated, I'm sorry, the, the, the document camera right now. So presumably you're seeing maybe me as a little person off my integrated camera and the big screen, the shared screen is this. Is that correct, everybody? Yes, we see your hand. Okay. Yeah, that is what we're Sounds good. All right, we are, we are moving ahead well. So if you want, however, this to be equivalent to like a whiteboard, which is what a lot of people are thinking. So here's a white piece of paper. 
just eight and a half by 11. I'm positioning it where it says letter on the black paper. That's kind of going to center it. It still might be a little crooked depending on the camera itself. So I can actually straighten that out. Now, again, you've got a lot of area here around the outside that you don't need students to see. So what I'm going to do is, if you notice at the top of the screen here for the, the Kodak software, it says document, barcode, email, photocopy, and video. You want to click on video. In video, again, you've got your paper here, and I'm actually going to press that light bulb button. So you see the light came on. It gives me a nice even um, illumination. Now over here on the left side, you guys see there's a couple of buttons, but the bottom button has these little arrows, kind of like in the four corners. This, if you mouse over it, it says full screen. I click on this. Now the software takes up the entire screen. OK, in addition to that, I have a bar down here, which hopefully all of you can see that lets me control this screen. So I can now zoom in. I click the little plus symbol. I can zoom in now and I can increase the size of this paper to take up the full screen. I mean, there's a little bit of black on the side, but that's because my paper is only so wide. OK, so this now allows me to have the equivalent of a nice little whiteboard here. My suggestion to you, you can write with a pen if you'd like. For one thing, if I try to write with a pen on the black pad, it might poke through because a, 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 a ballpoint pen could poke through this. But I'm assuming, can everybody see that it says hello? Yes. Yes. Looks uh, yes, clear or any pixelation? No. No. Okay. So that will be what you guys will hopefully get as well. All right. Now, my suggestion is have a slew of colored markers. Pens work, but I'm going I'm to suggest you go this route because this is going to give you your best, your best bang for your buck when you talk to the students. It's going to look the nicest on the paper. It's not going to poke through. And it's probably going to be most visible. <laughs> OK, if you're it's a math sharp. professor. Yes, hmm? it's very sharp. It's very sharp. No pun intended with the sharpies. If you're a math professor. This could especially be nice and convenient. I do this often. If anyone of you have been for my LED trainings at the campus, I would always do this as well. You know, you grab your nice colored markers here. Y equals X. But then do something like this in blue. You know, um, what would that be? Uh, I think it's absolute value of X and Y. So you get my point here. So this is this is a good option for how to use it as a whiteboard. Um, you can use the software that's built into the uh, Kodak uh, equipment. So I'm, I'm going to click on the little X that's going to exit me out of here. But if you go to document, you can actually take pictures of this. So click scan. And you see how I, I'm hoping you see there's a little green box around the outside perimeter. It recognizes the edge of the paper. And so when I click scan, it's going to take a picture of this. So if you want, you could basically take pictures of the notes if you want to send them to the students, though. Obviously, you know, if you record this as a video in Teams or in Zoom, you can do that as well. Um, you actually have the ability here if you wanted to record a video of something like this like a presentation, not in Teams or Zoom. You can actually do that as well. You see that it says record up here. So you can actually record using the document camera as well um, your entire presentation without needing to be in Zoom or in Teams. OK. Let's see, things that I have not covered. Um, so we went over how to enlarge it. 
we went over how to zoom in and zoom out. Uh, let's see. We went over switching to the integrated web camera or switching to the Kodak camera. And so my suggestion is you can do this exact same technique in Zoom. So if we were in Zoom, you would again have that ability to share your screen using the Kodak software. Um, there's also an option to switch in Zoom between the cameras as well. Uh, I believe when you're in the lower right hand corner. So let me let me see if I can bring up a Zoom meeting. I'll just start one. Um, okay. So let me share my screen again. If all of you can see. All right. So this is, is everyone seeing this Zoom meeting right now? Like they should see the mouse running across the screen, but it's a black yes. screen. Yes. Yes. yes I That's because see, I see that. my oh, integrated oh, web camera. Oh, it's currently being used in Teams, not in Zoom. You can only use it in one program at a time. But if I go here to video, I you see I have an option between integrated webcam and the Kodak camera. If the Kodak software is still still has it. Again, this is where I was telling you before, you can only have one thing at a time using a camera. So um, there you go. Again, my virtual background is going to create issues, so I need to turn off my virtual background. And there you go. Whatever would show up in Zoom would be the Kodak camera. So, so is that does that is that clear on how to switch between integrated camera and the document camera in Zoom as well? Yes. Uh, yeah, I agree. Okay, I just want to make sure that everyone's. Good. All right, so I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to exit out of. My Zoom meeting or oh, um, another option. Uh, let me quickly share my screen again and bring the software up. I, I had had it here and I had forgotten to put it up. So maybe you have a book or you have a syllabus or something like that, and maybe you want to walk students through that. And maybe you just don't have a digital version of it. And so you wanted to walk students through and basically say, you know, 9 plus 2, you know, 11, 9 plus 1, 10, and so on. OK, um, so I think those are the options that I can think of. And then, of course, recording videos if you want on your own outside of the Teams and Zoom format. To me, you can use this as the equivalent of a whiteboard, which by the way, that's another option if people want. They could actually get a, um, a whiteboard material, which is dry erase, and then put that down, and that would allow you to correct things. But keep in mind, though, they tend to be a bit glossy, and so the light from the camera may reflect off of it. Um, but so you can use this with either paper or whiteboard as a whiteboard. So for those of you who are not comfortable with the virtual whiteboard features or don't have a, uh, a touch screen that would allow you to do it that way, you can use it. You can use this to take pictures. You can use this to record videos. If you're doing some sort of lab sort of practical aspect, you know, maybe you've got specimens. Um, you know that you want to show like, um, you know, maybe you've got little things you know you wanted to demonstrate to people 